don't justify the quality of homemade and homemade is really really easy so i'm going to teach you guys how to make uh corn dogs but we have a twist on it we're going to be smoking the corn dogs right so we're going to smoke the hot dog first and then we're going to be making corn dogs and last but not least we're going to be making um uh some beautiful chili lime shrimp so this is a chili lime uh marinade that I would like to, it's, you could use it as a marinade, you could use it as a, as a dipping sauce, and definitely like almost like a barbecue sauce as you're, you're cooking different fish, chicken, and basting along the way. Um, some of my favorite tools and ingredients that we have here, um, we're gonna be smoking with mesquite. Mesquite's one of my favorite uh, flavor profiles when it comes to smoking. Um, I really like the, just the sort of density and uh, the, the thickness and the heaviness of mesquite that it, that it brings to, um, to the different flavors and things, especially going with bourbon and, um, and going with shrimp as well. I love grill, grilling, uh, grilling with mesquite. So we're gonna be using you're gonna be using uh, the wood pellets on the Ironwood 650. Um, this is a great size grill. Uh, for me, this is perfect for my family. We're a family of five. So, so this size grill is, uh, is kind of ideal um, for that everyday kind of barbecue uh, for us. And then, uh, you know, we have the Traeger, we have the Traeger uh, little deli tray here, which is crucial. If, um, if you see me in the kitchen at Odium and I'm doing any kind of prep work, I probably have a deli tray with me. So those things come in, in handy. And then also the tongs. Uh, we'll be utilizing these, uh, these beautiful tongs that are, that are perfect for grilling. Gonna help us out with the shrimp and the corn dogs later on. All right, so uh, as we get started, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our cocktail. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these cherries. So these cherries, I basically put them in the grill in the hot pan. So I started our started pan hot um, and put it on their grill. And then he, as the grill is kind of heating up, the pan's getting hotter and hotter. Uh, I use a nonstick pan because it's just kind of like sticky because of the sugar. Uh, and I basically put equal parts sugar to bourbon in there. So you got about four tablespoons of bourbon, four tablespoons of sugar, about 30 to 40 cherries. Um, and you just toss those in the pan all at once, toss it together and then let it, let it, let it cook in the, in the Traeger, um, getting some nice smoke on there. And that's gonna add like this nice quality. So you, these are fresh cherries uh, from the farmer's market and they're gonna be delicious in our cocktail. So I'm gonna start by just taking these cherries and we're gonna extract a little bit of the flavor out of them by crushing them up or by muddling them. We'll take take these take a little bit of the of the cherry liquid as well it's got some bourbon in there it's got the the sugar help sweeten up your cocktail um, take a lime we'll just take uh, take the lime and we can like top and tail the lime and then cut around it you can use a lime wedge if you don't want to use this but uh, this way I like to, to In there um, which will add a nice touch so I'll, I'll take that up I'm gonna dice it up depending on how the limes are the seasoning season of the limes you definitely uh, want to add a little bit more or less sometimes they come extra juicy sometimes they're not quite juicy enough for you so this one looks like it's gonna be pretty good so we'll go ahead and just kind of crush these up or muddle them and what we're doing is we're just trying to get like some of the liquid out of there. Extract some of that liquid, extract some of that juice, squeezing it against the side. This muddling is, uh, this is a great technique for, for extracting different flavors and different fruits. All right, so as we get this muddle going on here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some bitters. It's nice, the lime comes through. I'm gonna add about four dashes of bitters. Two, three, four, plus one for a good measure. Some bourbon. Bourbon of choice. Whatever you're into. Yes, so the first thing that I do is I, I stem and de-seed the cherries. So if someone asked if we remove the pit from the cherries, the answer is yes, 100%. Can you use any other fruit aside from cherries that would 
Absolutely. Um, another question is, can you use any other fruit? Yeah, this is a kind of a, like a classic building of a smash cocktail. So, um, you know, you can use really whatever, whatever you want as far as a fruit. And I definitely recommend switching it up, not getting in the habit of, of utilizing the same fruit because throughout the year is going to be a different season and there's going to be different fruit that are, that's in season. So making sure that we are highlighting the seasonal aspect of what you're, what you're going to be drinking. So, you know, peaches are going to be coming into season, season really, really soon. Uh, they already started in Los Angeles. So I definitely think peach, bourbon, smash is going to be delicious as well. Really, really good. All right, so next step is we're going to go ahead and build the cocktail. So we'll just put some ice in the cup here. All right. Then we're going to add our infused liquor here. Fill it about halfway up. We'll take our Coke. Top it off. About eight ounces of Coke. But again, you can do this to your flavor preference. So if you want a little bit more boozy or you want a little bit more Coke, then uh, build it however you like. And then our next step, we're just gonna garnish it with some of these beautiful cherries that we did. So, you know, making sure that we don't that we leave these around here. Um, as you're kind of sipping through that, get a cherry, kind of bite into it, it's gonna be delicious. And then for this, I'm gonna use a wheel of lime. I just think it's gonna be nice and beautiful on top of that for our garnish. There you have smoked cherry bourbon and coke got one for the wifey and one for me here you go a little cheers 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 now we can bid again to barbecue right mm. yeah it's really really nice um and my wife doesn't she doesn't like like straight sort of strong bourbon drinks so um and she's telling me off camera that it's really really good so if it works for the wife, then uh, happy wife, happy life, right? Okay, so our next step, we're going to be making our corn dogs. So I already have a couple that we've fried off here, um, but it's a really, really simple batter uh, that we're going to be we're going to be utilizing. Uh, there is kind of like a variable within the recipe, and that's the the corn meal that you get. So um, depending on the corn meal that you have. Uh, it might or might not take a little bit more, um, take a little bit more of the milk. But you have equal parts flour and cornmeal here. And again, this one's this one's ground up kind of fine. Um, the one I used last time I made this recipe was a little bit coarser of a grind. Um, the coarser of the grind took about a, a cup of milk. This one for me took about a cup and a quarter of milk. Um, so depending on what you're looking for definitely um, definitely adjust it by your eye and I'll show you exactly what we mean when we when we look at the the consistency of the batter here in a second so cornmeal in there we have our flour in there this is uh, our sugar this is salt and baking powder so anytime we make a recipe um, with dry and wet ingredients we definitely want to combine our dry ingredients first that way the salt gets distributed, the flour gets distributed, the baking powder gets distributed. Next step, we're gonna add an egg. This one comes from uh, downstairs in our backyard from our chickens. Some beautiful egg there. And we're gonna add milk. So this is a little bit over a cup of milk. So I'm gonna add what I think is about a cup. there and we're going to adjust the consistency so you can see as we can see here we're pretty thick that was probably about a half a cup really so i put one and a half cups in there 
the recipes should be live right now. So if you guys have any questions on the recipes or you want to follow along with the recipes, make any notes, ask any questions, I believe you can go right now online to the Traeger, the Traeger uh, either Traeger app or Traeger website and go to recipe section and look for, uh, you can search it out by the name or you can search it out by my name as well. So Tim Hollingsworth or, um, you know, smoked cherry bourbon cocktail, smoked cherry bourbon coke, our corn dogs. Okay, so our consistency here, you can see we're, we're on the thicker side, which is good. This is exactly what we're looking for. We want it to be slightly thick. We want that, we want to be able to kind of have the corn dog nice and nice and uh, you want it to, to coat and you want it to puff up. So if it's too thin, your, your batter is going to be too thin around the corn dog. And if it's too thick, you're going to have a hard time getting the consistency that you want. We have a question, what temp are we cooking at? For the, um, for the corn dogs, we're gonna be frying at around 375, 350, 375, somewhere in there. And then, uh, but for the, for the smoking part of the, of the hot dog, we'll go ahead and talk about that. These are Snake River Farms hot dogs. Um, what to look for in a hot dog. Really, it's all about your, your personal preference. I think hot dog is kind of a really personal thing, depending on where you grew up, where you're from, uh, what you're looking for in a hot dog. Um, but I think the, that what you definitely want to do is you want to add to the flavor profile of the hot dog um, by, by smoking it, right? So we took the smoke on this one. We cooked it at 165 degrees. And really, the, the hot dogs, when you buy them, are already cooked, right? So we cooked ours at 165 degrees. So we cooked it as low as the Traeger goes, and then we put it on super smoke. So we're really trying to like pump that smoke inside the hot dog at a nice cooler temperature. Um, so we're not like charring the hot dog. We're not getting any color on the hot dog. We're just getting getting the hot dog to a place where it's going to be um, it's going to have uh, impart a nice smoky flavor profile throughout the cooking process. Sorry, I'm having a little technical issue here with our fry oil. So fry oil is going to take one minute to, to heat up. Um, in the meantime, someone asked, <clears throat> where are you located and where are we cooking today? So someone's asking where we're located, we're going to be cooking from today. Uh, today we're in downtown Los Angeles or, or Mount Washington, part of LA. It's uh, you're in my backyard, which has you guys are facing this side, but what I'm looking at is an incredible view. Um, couldn't have the cameras faced that way due to the lighting issues that it has, but uh, this is a beautiful backyard. Um, my family of five lives here, and we have, uh, we have two big dogs and five chickens and two ducks trying to live a little bit of a country life inside of, inside of, inside of an urban environment. So while we wait for the hot dogs to heat up, or for the for the oil to heat back up on the on the uh, induction burner here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make the shrimp dish. So, for the shrimp dish, very very simple. Um, it's kind of like three components. One is just making your marinade. The marinade is going to be plenty. Um, it's going to be more than we need today, right? So this this amount of marinade is is uh, is going to be live, be able to live in uh, in your refrigerator and uh, you're gonna be able to use it for several different, several different cooks because we're just gonna use a nice thin layer. But for me, whenever I make stuff like this, I like to, I like to have it a little bit in bulk. Um, that way, you know, that way, uh, that way I'm not making, making stuff every single time I'm, I'm, I go to cook anything. So I have to have like a, like to have like a little bit of a pantry. Um, the first step on this is gonna be uh, taking your Wajillo chilies so uh, this is, uh, this is uh, Wajillo chilies are from Mexico. Um, this ingredient and this hot sauce, salsa um, huicachol, is, uh, are both maybe, maybe difficult for you to find or maybe not. Um, you can source them easily online. Uh, if not, I go to Mexican market down the street from my house and they always have these ingredients. So um, if, you, if you have a, a Mexican market near you, you'll probably be able to source these ingredients. If not, you can purchase it online. 
For the Wajio chilies, um, something that I, that I did is I, I, um, I took them and I toasted them. So whenever you're working with the, with the chilies like this, a dried chili, you wanna toast it. So you, first I, I, I took the seeds out and the stem off. So cut the stem off, opened them up, took as many seeds out as I could. Um, and then I just put them directly on the grill or in a, in a, in a, in a pan is fine too. And you just wanna, you wanna slightly toast it and you want to bring it, bring it up and get a nice flavor, flavor profile like by extracting all the oils from the chilies. So you were extracting the oils from the chilies. Um, if they do get burnt, toss them. They're not gonna be good. They become very, very bitter, very, very fast. So it's a slow process. You wanna do it over gentle heat. And um, once they're done, I just soak them in hot water. So I pour hot water over the top of them. I put a lid over top or plastic wrap on top of it. And I just let them steep for at least a half an hour. And what that does is, is it, it helps it to kind of break down. So now that they've broken down a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and add them to our blender. So someone's asking if we score the hot dog. You can definitely score the hot dog in there. It depends on how much uh, smoke that you want. So, you know, I, I do like smoke in the, in the hot dog, but I don't, want, I don't want it to be overly smoky. I just want to impart that kind of flavor for it. If you want it extra, you can smoke it longer or definitely you can score it. Um, when you score it, your, the texture of the hot dog is going to be a little bit different, right? It's going to open up and flare out a little bit. So uh, it might not be as beautiful on the, um, on the corn dog but um, you know, it, it, it does work and you can do it. So we're gonna add our mayonnaise as well. Once we add the mayonnaise, we add our hot sauce. So this hot sauce, this is about six tablespoons of hot sauce in there for a cup of mayonnaise and 2.25 ounces of chilies. We have a couple of tablespoons of chili de arbol powder that we're gonna to add to that as well. And then we're gonna add the juice of a couple of limes. This is a, like I said, this is a very, very easy sauce. This sauce is excellent um, over a lot of different things. It's, it's kind of based off of uh, a classic Mexican dish called zorandiado, which is uh, kind of like a, a, a chili mayo that they, they put over the top of fish when they bake it. Um, so if you are really into like whole grilled fish, especially like on a white fish, um, it's super, super delicious. You just kind of butterfly that fish open or take like a, you know, a loin of hamachi or something like that, rub it, marinate it, a nice thin layer. And then when you cook it, you allow that sauce to kind of dry over the top of, over the top of your, uh, over your fish. And it comes out really, really good. All right, so we have this here. We're gonna go put the lid on here. Uh, someone asked what culinary school you attended. So somebody asked what culinary school I attended. I never went to culinary school. Um, I worked at a, I worked at, I started as a dishwasher at my at my hometown, and uh, I worked there for about three years, moving up fairly fairly quickly. Um, and then at that point, I, I, I looked into culinary school. I went and I flew myself to New York and went to culinary school for about a week, the CIA, just to kind of like um, check the school out, see if it was something that I was into. It's like a trial period. Um, but I returned home and said, you know what? I don't think the culinary school, the route is the best way for me to go. I just want to work for the best and surround myself with the best. So um, I went to the French Honor and I, got, I, was ha I happened to get a job there and I worked there for uh, about 13 years. So that was, that was my culinary school. All right.
right, so halfway through, just kind of blend it up a little bit. Um, just want to make sure that we're getting all the different bits and pieces. So make sure on the side it, it's breaking down. Looks like it's pretty good. Give that a try. Oh yeah, that'll do. So like I said, you don't, if you like it less spicy or more spicy, feel free to adjust based on your kind of flavor profile. For me, this is, this is uh, borderline spicy for my kids, so it's kind of where we stop. Sorry, what was the question? What's that spice level? Uh, this person really likes spicy food, but nobody else does at the house. So. Yeah, so somebody had, what, what level of spice is this? Um, People in the family have different levels of spice uh, that, they're, that they're looking at. So for me, the level of spice in this is probably like a, a five. Um, but for my kids, it's probably like a, an, an, a nine or a 10. So it's about as, as hot as they can go, maybe a little bit too spicy. But again, if you're, if you're seasoning it with lime at the end and you're brushing a thin amount over the top of it, or it's a thicker cut fish, if you happen to use it for that, then you know it, it kind of, that, that factors in. Um, what I would suggest, the, the Wajillo chilies are not that spicy. Um, what, when it comes to spicy, the chili de arbol and the hot sauce makes it spicier. So if you wanted to make it, you can blend up the chilies with the mayonnaise and everything like that, and then kind of bring it out, put it in a couple different bowls, and then add your other ingredients inside of it. That would help. All right, so for this next step, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to season our onions. So anytime I have like, you know, grilled shrimp or, or something with fish, I love to just take onions and char them. Um, it's pretty classic with, with grilled types of grilled fish. So for me, um, just getting these green onions, I grew up with these onions, um, it's something my mom used a lot. So. Uh, I definitely like the flavor profile of them. But I treat them very, very simply. You know, I wanna, uh, the, the mayonnaise is gonna be pretty flavorful. The shrimp is gonna have a decent amount of flavor. So I'm just gonna char these onions with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. So we dress them in oil. Uh, again, the reason why we're dressing them in oil, we definitely want the onions to be coated, uh, but we also want the spices and uh, the seasoning to stick to them. So. A little bit of olive oil first, touch of salt. This is, uh, you know, this is kosher salt. Um, if you guys are using, this is, this is kind of like one of my biggest pet peeves about, about cooking or, or, or the level of detail that I like to go into with salt is, um, this is like diamond crystal kosher salt. It's, it's a, diamond crystal is just re referring, referring to like the size of the crystals that salt has been ground to. But if you use like your, the old school salt that my mom has, which is like the iodinized, like Morton's iodinized salt, it's super, super fine. And it's really difficult to kind of season things for me at least. So I like to, use, I like to season with the same salt every single time um, as a seasoning salt. I do use finishing salt, but the same salt as a seasoning salt, use the same one every single time. I kind of get a feel for it. So whether I'm adding it to a salad dressing, seasoning a piece of meat or fish, grilled onions, any of that stuff, you know, I'm, I'm able to like, I'm able to like tell and, and consistently season. So the flavor, um, the flavor is always kind of like relatively the same and I don't have to deal with something being too salty or not enough seasoning based off of not being able, you know, not knowing the, the salt. Sometimes when I go to my mom's house and I season with her salt, I, I make things a little too salty on accident. I like a lot of pepper on my onions, so we're gonna keep going on the pepper. All right. So for this, we have the, uh, the, we have the Traeger set at about 425 degrees. So, and you always wanna kind of pay attention to your grill and see you know, where, where the, the hotter spots on the grill are and the colder spots on the grill. Um, for me, I seem to find the, the back left-hand corner to be a little bit hotter. So that's where, 
that's where I want to put my onions, right? I want to put them in the back, back corner over there, um, just so they get an opportunity to char. The bulb of the green onion is a little bit thicker than the, the green part of the onion. So whenever we're utilizing that, I definitely, I definitely like to make sure that we're, um, that I'm trying to put the thicker part in, in the hottest, hottest part so that they cook a little bit, a little bit more evenly. All right, time for our shrimp. So here we have, uh, these are head on shrimp. Um, these are blue shrimp. And uh, I went ahead and I put a little bit of olive oil on them. Um, the reason I put a little bit of olive oil just so it doesn't stick to the rack. And I'll show you, show you why I like to use the rack here in a second. Can you put that pan in the, in the stove in the kitchen and cook it on high? Bring it up, Popo. It's not cooking. Okay, so we have we have the <clears throat> the shrimp here. I'm gonna put a nice thin layer on these. Get it on the head and everything. About 375 degrees. So again, the, the Traeger itself is on 425 degrees. Right now I'm just painting the shrimp nicely. We're gonna go ahead and flip them over. Make sure we get it on both sides. See how beautiful color there? Really, really nice. Very fragrant, just a chili and the lime. So someone is, someone is asking if we could uh, use different types of hot dogs. Uh, the answer is always, always yes to using different types of stuff. Whatever you're into, you know, definitely, you know, you want a cheesy hot dog on the inside, um, go for it. I'm all, I'm all for it. I mean, the corn dog is a great vehicle. If you wanted to use a sausage, you could. If you wanted to use a vegetarian option, you could as well. For me, I like I like good old-fashioned hot dogs. Just reminds me, you know, Fourth of July, and reminds me of my childhood. And that's what a lot of cooking is for me. You know, it just reminds me of growing up, being around family, um, making those memories. Okay, so here we have our our shrimp. We're going to go ahead and put these directly on the grill. Well, I like to use a rack so I can I have a nice even move and I don't have to worry about standing over the, the Traeger with the with the lid open. You know, I like to be able to go kind of in and out fast so we keep track of our temperature. Um, so definitely you know, definitely working a little bit more organized and thinking about the process that you're doing. So anytime I have like something that's uh, really, really small or uh, something that kind of goes fast, um, I like to I like to put it on a rack. Uh, that way, like, you know, when it comes out and I want to if I want to turn the shrimp over, um, I can just take these shrimp and, you know, pull them back, um, pull them all out at the same time, flip them over and work with them. So uh, that way I don't have like one shrimp in the back that's cooking you know differently i could also rotate the rack which is really really nice as well we have a question about the the apron so someone's asking where we got this apron it's a really cool apron um, great company based in los angeles called headley and bennett um, they're awesome for aprons check it out you can always recognize their aprons by the ampersand sign um, so while the shrimp are going, uh, we have a little bit of technical difficulty with our induction burner, so we're going to heat up the, the oil for frying on the inside. Um, but any questions that you have? We need to go to 375. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, 
Yeah, if you're at if you're at one, you know, turn. Somebody's asking if you don't have a super smoke capability, how you, how are you going to get um, more smoke on it? Um, I mean, you're definitely going to be able. You're definitely going to be wanting to work within the um, the framework of what your grill has and the capabilities that it has. Um, 165 and and is a pretty low temperature. So if you really wanted to add more smoke to it um, and you don't have super smoke, you can probably just cook it for about 30 minutes on 165. You can kind of chill the hot dogs down, go back in and cook them again if you wanted even more smoke. Um, but I've done it with super smoke and without super smoke, and I've been happy with both both uh, you know both uh, the techniques. If you want a little bit more smoke, the super smoke function is great. Or like I said, we can just kind of go back and forth and, and bring it open. So we have a question about tips and tricks for pizza on the Traeger. Uh, anyway, any ways to do it? Um, yeah, I would definitely just say like you have to have a hot stone. Um, and heating, heating the hot stone up. So going, going with the Traeger as, as hot as possible, turning up to 500 degrees and, um, you know, putting that stone in there and letting it warm up the stone, probably at least the whole cycle of the warming process and a little bit further on that, just getting it hot, 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 as hot as you can. Um, uh, and then working really, really fast and transferring that pie, uh, to the stone, uh, is going to be your key. Cause anytime you kind you want to cook pizza, Obviously, it depends on which style of pizza that you're making, but typically it's cooked at a fairly hot temperature. Um, so uh, just trying to maintain that 500 degrees as much as possible. But I also like warming up pizza slices too, you know, so uh, it's, it's, you know, something that you can just throw a, throw a pan in there and, um, and, ha and have the Traeger on. It's easy. I'm not going to turn the stove on in my house. I'm not going to heat up my house in the summertime. It's really, really hot in LA. So I love coming outside, turning on the Traeger, um, and, and reheating pizza that way. Uh, if you want to put a little smoke on there, 165 super smoke works great too. Uh, for the shrimp, were they divine? Was the shell removed? If not, how do you impart flavor with the sauce? Okay. So the, the question about the shrimp and how they were processed. So these shrimp, um, were were peeled leaving the head on and leaving the tail on and then we deveined them um so when you're doing that uh i like to do that that's a great way to cook great way to cook it especially on a traeger because it's going to cook nice and fast um but um so that's the way that that i cook these um the question was like if you left the shell on um would there would you still get enough flavor peel and eat shrimp are, are amazing i love peel and eat shrimp um, I love getting a nice charred flavor. And again, this mayonnaise kind of uh, brushed over the top of those. And then you're not, you're not gonna get the flavor like super inside, but like it's kind of a dirty job as you're kind of going through it and you're eating it. When that happens, you know, you're getting that mayonnaise. Um, some people I know, and myself included, sometimes we eat the shells as well. So we'll just kind of go through there and, and not worry about picking them off. All right, so I had a, qu a couple of questions about uh, the knife we're using and the cutting board that we're using. Um, this cutting board I've had for, wow, I would say, I mean, I wanna say like 20 years, honestly. I've had this cutting board for a very, very long time. Um, it's a booze block cutting board. It, I, it has had some damage over the years every once in a while, but I just sand it down and I refinish it. Um, so just rubbing it with like a mineral oil and uh, just keeping it keeping it good. Sometimes if it's put away wet or it got too wet or it didn't dry well, um, or you know you get kind of like marks in there from from cutting a lot, I just sand it down, refinish it, and rebuild it. But I mean, like I said, this cutting board used to be a little bit thicker. Um, I've had this one for a very long time, and I love it. So uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that are making cutting boards. I even make cutting boards in my garage sometimes. Um, it's a fun, it's a fun project. You need to have the right tools to be able to do it. But, um, you know, if you're, if you're out there online, you can get some specialty ones. This is the, this is one that the, the grain of the wood is kind of running this way. Um, 
and they have they have some that are like the ingrain cutting boards, which are really really beautiful as well. They're a little bit stronger um, and a little bit a little bit denser because of the way that the the edges of the wood or the the parts that are showing. Um, another question was about the knife that we're using today. Um, this is a Mizuno knife. It's a Japanese brand knife. It is. I love this knife. This is a knife I've used for since I was 21 years old. Um, not this in particular knife. I've gotten a few over the years, but uh, this knife is this knife is great. The reason why I like it is because it's fairly inexpensive. So this one's like 90 bucks. Um, I can kind of blow through them. I can treat them, you know, as poorly as nice as I can. Uh, remember, ninety dollars for something as a chef, and I use it every single day of my life. Like it's a it's a it's a relatively small investment. Knives you can you can spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on knives, thousands of dollars on knives, if you wanted to. So this is a fairly inexpensive one that is really really durable, and um, and very very easy to sharpen. Uh, another thing, it's it's thin. So a lot of the big bulky knives that you that you see are harder for like smaller knife cuts. Um, I use a lot of detailed knife cuts. I'm fairly fast with a knife. Uh, so in doing so, I like to have a thin, thinner blade knife. And the way that it's sharpened, um, a lot of knives are sharpened 50-50. So equal, equally, you know, the bevel is equal on both sides. This one is 70-30. So about 70, 70 degrees on this one and uh, when I sharpen it, I sharpen it seven times and three times, seven times and three times. Um, and again, that helps have like a nice fine edge that goes through. All right, so shrimp is looking like it's getting nice. Onions are looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and add our onions. See, you got a nice smoky flavor in there. Smell it, it smells great. The onions are still nice and bright. Um, the green part is, is cooked. The white part is nice and tender as well. One thing to notice when you, when you are like seasoning onions and stuff like that, we didn't discuss this before, but just make sure that you have a nice balance on, um, on the salt because when you're seasoning something like this, where you have the onions are, um, the onions are not gonna get another sauce to them. They're not gonna really get anything on them. So, and we coated them with oil. So the, whatever the seasoning is on there is gonna stay on there. So making sure we don't over season it with salt because otherwise you're gonna have like nice dried up, not so nice dried up pieces of salt. All right, so we'll, ch we'll check our, we'll check our shrimp. This is a, you know, people are always wondering um, when shrimp are cooked. You know, that's like a, a big, big, big issue. And I would say that the easiest way to check it out is to stick something in there. Could be your knife, could be these little tweezers. You hold it in there for about five seconds and you touch it to your lip. Um, you want them to be just, just slightly warmed. You don't want it to be overly hot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put these right back on. I'm gonna turn them over. So we have the heat on the opposite side. Can I ask what other fish, uh, types of fish would work well with that marinator sauce? So question is what type of fish would work really well with this marinator sauce? Um, any white fish works really, really great. Crab works really great as well. And any shellfish. So shrimp, um, or I shouldn't say any shellfish. Shrimp or uh, specifically shrimp, lobster would be amazing. Cut the lobster in half, brush it over the top of it, smoke that delicious and again we use you know we use shrimp today shrimp is shrimp is something that you know when I think of fourth of July I think about shrimp all right so we have our oil over here I think we're heated up nicely so to make the corn dog pretty simple we're just gonna dip it in our batter here and again we want that coating to be be nice right you want it to be fairly thick. We we'll just drop it in, just like that. Fry a couple at a time. Get that going in there. 
What temperature was it? Yeah. So it was at 375 degrees. We're having, if you guys remember, we're having a little bit of issue with the induction burner here. So um, I'm not gonna overcrowd my pan because the induction burner is not on, but 375 should carry us through for the corn dogs here, for three corn dogs. Uh, potato buns are the number one bun for me on on uh, hot dogs. So someone's asking, you know, what what's my preference if I'm not making corn dogs? And truthfully, as a kid, kind of a funny thing, I never I never liked hot dogs as a kid. When my family made hot dogs, um, I would have the bun with like ketchup. So um, I wasn't a I wasn't a, a hot dog kid, but I did love corn dogs. So for whatever reason, um, I don't know I don't know why, but that was just the case. So, uh, but I, I love a good hot dog these days. I don't have them all the time, but um, you know, I think it's around those those kind of holidays and stuff like that that you, you know, that you're that I really get into them. All right, so we're we're frying this up. Making sure that it's again we're having a little bit of issue here with the See if I can adjust it. So we'll, we'll get these nice and golden as much as possible. And you can see some of these, some of these want to want to split. Just adjust your batter if, if it if it if it needs to um, if it if it's not sticking to it, then then um, you know it, it might be too thick. Now, if it's too thin, your 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 hot dog to to a corn corn batter is going to be a little bit off, right? All right, these shrimp we can tell they're, that they're looking nice and good here. Beautiful. Okay, so these shrimp, see how they're they're curling up a bit? You can you can tell that they're done that way as well. Plus, I know that you know I was pretty much done the last time uh, I put them in the oven. It just needed a, a touch longer. So I know I know I'm going to be good now. So I like to just kind of spread out these onions, um, making a nice bed for the shrimp, and then we can just you know we can just layer the shrimp around here. In a nice, beautiful way. Um, you know the reason, and the reason why I'm doing it right over the top of the onions, because I want it to, you know, I want the, that mayonnaise to get on the onions a little bit. I think it's, I think it's going to be delicious with that. So we'll have the, the mayonnaise on that as well. And then, one thing we definitely don't want to forget is to add a little bit more lime. Take our lime, squeeze it right over the top here. Um, and a decent amount of lime is, is great. Remember the spice in there, the lime is gonna be kind of that refreshing factor. So I do that. Um, I'm gonna season them with a little bit of salt. Beautiful. Serve it with def definitely want to serve it with some lime wedges as well. That way, when people are grabbing it, um, they can go ahead and do it. Have that lime in there. Sorry about the issue that we're having with uh, with the oil temperature here, but. I think you guys get the point with uh, with the corn dogs. Basically, you're going to cook them in there um, until they turn golden brown. At 375 degrees, when it's holding that temperature, it's normally going to take around um, around four minutes, probably in there, four minutes max. So like two and a half minutes to four minutes, depending on depending on your oil temperature and depending on how many that you're adding to the oil and how much oil you actually have. Um, so if you're deep frying them in a home fryer, small fryer, maybe you have two quarts of oil four quarts of oil, depending on how large your pot is, uh, definitely playing around with that. 
What other questions do we have? Hmm? I'm going to secure these corn dogs. We we're only able to get the long skewers at the, at the market today. But that's okay, my kids love these ones actually. Any more questions? What do you like to do? How about the sauces and the shrimp they have you with the corn dogs? Yeah, I mean, someone's asking if the chili lime shrimp is, uh, the, the chili lime mayo would be good with the corn dogs. 100% it would be good with the corn dogs. Um, you know, this is, I mean, I think some people dip their, their corn dogs in mayonnaise, um, but the chili, like the chili, the chili and the lime to that component are going to be delicious. Alright, we have some, uh, wrapping up questions. What kind of pellets did you use today? So we had a wrapping, wrapping up question. I used mesquite pellets today, uh, primarily for the shrimp. Um, what restaurant? Uh, someone's asking what restaurants I own. I own a restaurant in downtown Los Angeles called Odium. Um, and uh, I also own a restaurant that is at the Bank of California Stadium called CJ Boyd's, which is a fried chicken uh, fried chicken sandwich shop and that pays homage to my grandfather. Uh, any new shows in the works? Uh, someone's asking if there's any new television shows uh, in the works. Um, not specifically, we are in the process of pitching a couple right now, so we'll see, you know, we'll see if any of them uh, hit, uh, but I will be, I have done some guest, guest, uh, guest chef judging, um, and I have another one on Monday. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say uh, that I'm a judge on it yet, so I can't tell you. <laughs> uh, what's your 4th of July plans and menu this year? So somebody's asking me what's my 4th of July plans and menu this year. Um, 4th of July, I'd love to go home and see my family. Uh, this year, uh, a lot of my family is going to be visiting my grandma in, um, in Vegas. Uh, but for work reasons, I have to be up north in Northern California. So I'm going to be going up there. Um, and then my sisters will be up there. So I'm going to go up there and, and, and see my sisters. And the menu that we're going to be having, I'm not sure because we won't be, we won't be, uh, we'll be staying. actually cooking which is really unfortunate actually because um well it's gonna be nice to be away but uh our house whenever the fireworks are, are going off we have this fantastic view you can follow along on my instagram you can see uh, the view that we have uh here which is like really really incredible and it overlooks like a lot of different cities um and you just get like the the firework show is literally insane because it's like multiple multiple counties like firework show Last question. It's like a war fry, scene. Could you fry these corn dogs in an air fryer? Last question was, could we fry these corn dogs in an air fryer? Um, I don't know the answer to that question, truthfully. Um, the one thing that I would say is that um, I don't know that it would work. And the reason is, is that um, I think the batter might drip off. But that being said, I think that you can probably come up with a way to, to air fry it you know, in, in something um, where you're holding the batter. But if you have the batter, the batter is going to drip off and uh, fryer a ton. Um, but that's like a cakey batter, so. Um, Uh, corn. I'm I'm easy. Here. That you get from smoking a hot dog, and with that cornbread, it's uh, with that. Uh, 
these shrimp. Okay, for the shrimp. Thanks for joining in. Um, it's awesome. Um, if you want slash recipes, you can site two weeks, right? Two weeks north and uh, check it out and any. You can also find that com, or you can go on the and, uh, either way, super easy to buy it. July, July, and um,